The Battle of Ybor Bay was a naval battle fought between Russia and Sweden on July 4, 1790, during the Russo-Swedish War. The Swedish Navy suffered heavy losses, losing six ships of the line and four frigates. But Gustav III of Sweden eventually ensured a Swedish naval escape through a Russian naval blockade composed of units of the Baltic Fleet. Commanded by Admiral Vasily Chichagov, the battle ranks among the world's largest historical naval battles and also among the most influential, as it introduced the naval battle concept of firepower over mobility. Background In 1790, King Gustav III of Sweden revived his plan for a landing close to St. Petersburg, this time near Vibor. But the plan founded in a disastrous attack on the Russian fleet of the Battle of Rival on May 13. A further attack on the Russian fleet off Kronstadt at the beginning of June also failed and the Swedish High Seas Fleet and their archipelago fleet both retired to Vibor Bay. The stage for the battle was set in the first week of June 1790. Northern white nights were nearly as light as the day and, to King Gustav's consternation, unfavorable southwesterly winds prevented the combined Swedish fleets of some 400 vessels from sailing southeast to Swedish-controlled Finnish waters. This allowed the Russian sailing battle fleet and coastal galley fleet to join forces. King Gustav ordered a two-part Swedish naval force of 400 ships to anchor temporarily between the islands of Krisserort and Biskop so just inside the mouth of Bay of Ybor, Russia, in the Gulf of Finland. This strategic position placed the Swedish navy within striking distance of the Russian imperial capital, St. Petersburg. The sailing battle fleet of 21 ships of the line, 13 frigates, various smaller ships, and 16,000 men, was led by Flag Captain Admiral Nordensky Old, under command of Grand Admiral Duke Karl, younger brother of King Gustav III of Sweden. The coastal galley flotilla of 14,000 sailors and army soldiers was led by Flag Captain Colonel George de Fries under personal charge of Gustav III of Sweden. On June 8, 1790, the Russian Baltic fleet under Admiral Vasily Chichagov blockaded the only two navigable channels in and out of Vibor Bay and locked the Swedish fleet in the bay while he waited for Prince Charles Henry of nassau siegen to arrive from Kronstadt with the Russian galley fleet. This blockade consisted of a primary force of 50 ships and a secondary force of 20 galleys, 8 road archipelago frigates and 52 other road galleys. On Chichagov's orders, four sets of ships were positioned east to west broadsides to the Swedish force. The first set, led by Major General Pyotr Lezhnev, consisted of four ships of the line in the narrow eastern channel, in the dangerously shallow western channel between Krisserort and Rapier Grunsat a set of five chain-linked ships of the line, a group of five frigates further south between Lilla Fiskinar Island, the Penser Islets and the shoreline, and another group of five ships further west at Pitkapasi. Meanwhile, on June 18, 1790, an assault on the Russian galley fleet at Trangsund, ordered by Gustav III of Sweden and started two days earlier, failed due to lack of support of its center force and returned. Shortages of food and water prompted Gustav III of Sweden to act. On June 19, 1790, he instructed Admiral Nordensky Old to formulate a plan for the breakout for when the winds changed, one which would include a distraction with gun sloops at Canon Slurpar with an actual breakout at Chrysorot, and one which the king would lead personally. Then on July 2, 1790, the wind shifted to the north, favorably for the Swedish Supreme Command at Viborg Bay, which met in session, and a Swedish reconnaissance force apprehended a Russian unit at Björko Sound in the Battle of Björko Sound. Battle. On June 21, 1790, Prince Nassau Siegen attacked the Swedes at Björko Sound with 89 ships. 
Then, at nightfall on July 3, 1790, Gustav III of Sweden ordered the breakout to commence from Chrysorot at 1000 on the following day. At 200 on July 4, 1790, Swedish units bombarded Russian shore batteries. At the same time, Swedish sloops, led by Lieutenant Colonel Jacob Torning, attacked a Russian naval unit just west of Vasakansari Island. West of Bjorko Sound, just prior to 700 that morning, Gustav III of Sweden spoke with then-Captain Johan Puke of the 64-gun ship of the line, the Dristjutten, which would lead the breakout. Moments later, Puke, aboard the Dristjutten, led a line of ships and the Swedish naval fleet away from the bay, through the western channel, around the Salvas shallows into the middle of the channel between the shallows and Chrysorot, and towards the first Russian ships of the line, the Seslav and St. Peter which were part of the Russian Admiral Povelitian squadron deployed to block the channel leading to west. This line of ships consisted of the flagship the Konunga Star III, the Seraphi Merodin, in the line's center, the Manliaton, the other ships of line, the navy frigates, the frigate Zamaya, the 70-gun ship of the line and Iaton, and three fire barges, used to set fire to enemy ships. Meanwhile, the flotilla protected the naval fleet on a parallel course further west nearer the shoreline. Immediately prior to the engagement, Gustav III transferred onto a smaller sloop. Puke ordered all non-essential personnel below decks and, moments later, the Swedish navy engaged the Russian blockade. Splitting between the Selsave and the St. Peter, Gustav III of Sweden was rowed through the fire, but the flagship Konon Gustav III was hit and the Grand Admiral Duke Karl injured. While the blockading Russian ships opened fire on the Swedish vanguard, the damage caused by the Russian ships was relatively small and all Swedish ships remained fully capable of action. Swedish fire when sailing past the blockading Russian ships however caused severe damage to several of the Russian ships. By the time the main body of the Swedish fleets arrived to the blockade the Russian ships posed no longer any danger to the Swedes. At least one of the Russian ships had suffered a severe list from the damage. Russian frigate squadron west of the Povelitian ships was too far out with their visibility obscured by gunpowder smoke to prevent the Swedish ships from breaching the blockade. Near total inactivity of the main body of the Russian fleet of Admiral Chichag evaded the Swedes. Once through the first group of ships, Gustav III of Sweden reboarded the Seraphi Merodin, the king's personal ship. The Amphan survived with no damage. Further west the galley fleet line of ships consisting sequentially of the frigates Stibjorn and Norden, six Turuma squadron ships, Salanvara, the remaining archipelago frigates, Malmbergs and Hjelmstirna's coastal squadrons, and Colonel Jacob Toningen's assigned gun sloops and gun tenders, passed the first Russian set of ships, then engaged the second. The Stibjorn, though subjected to heavy fire, managed to pass through and score several hits on Russian commander Povelitian's ship and on the bombship Abeditel. As the majority of both Swedish fleets passed through the blockade, Ensign Sandal, commanding the fire ship Postil Jonin, towed by the 74 gun ship of the line in Ayrton, set to his ship on fire too early. He then, under alcoholic intoxication, committed a series of errors which caused the fire ship to drift towards the Aniaton, setting it on fire, and then to collide with the Swedish 40-gun frigate Zamaya, with all three ships exploding in an enormous channel covering cascade of debris and smoke. The explosion severely damaged or destroyed ships within or trying to get through the blockade. The Russian ship groups blocking the Swedish fleet were disrupted by passing Swedish ships. The Swedish Navy lost a total of eight ships. Four grounded ships of the line, the 64-gun Hedvig Elizabeth Charlotte, the Finland at the Salvas Chalios, the 74-gun Lovisa Ulrika at the Pasilo de Chalos just south of Rypey and the 64-gun Omerton at the Penser Islets, and one shipwrecked ship of the line. Although the King's British naval advisor Sidney Smith was saved, three frigates including the Upperland and the Jaroslavitz, 
both at the Pasilo de Chalios. The two Swedish fleets followed separate routes from the bay. The battle fleet accompanied by most of the heavier elements of the archipelago fleet sailed to the open sea while the rest of the archipelago fleet followed the much shallower route closer to the land. However, the Russian frigate squadron commanded by Crown was deployed expressly to blockade the shallower route which forced the light Swedish gun sloops gun yawls and galleys to head to more open waters where the waves and winds rendered the Swedish archipelago fleet almost totally incapable of fighting. Noticing that the Swedes sailed further out and the problems that it had caused Crown set after them and forced several of the Swedish ships to strike their colours as he threatened to run over the small Swedish ships struggling in the open sea. Crown's squadron very nearly captured Gustav III but were turned away almost on the last seconds by the orders from Chichagov to start pursuit of the Swedish battle fleet just as Crown's frigate was about to capture the ship where Gustav III was, as the Russians had only sent few prize crews in their hurry to force Swedish ships to surrender most of the Swedish ships which had surrendered raised the flags again or overpowered the prize crews and rejoined the Swedish archipelago fleet once the frigate squadron had been ordered to leave. The Swedish archipelago fleet lost four galleys to the Chalios, the Aaron Prus, the Palmsteena, the Nerica. These ships were all run aground at the Penser Islet, close to the second set of Russian ships and the Russian ship Nolly Me Tanjira. Only Nerika was able to get escape while others were forced to struck their colours. Additionally galleys Ostergotland, Nordstjern Orden, Eekblad and Dalan were captured by the Russians while the Swedish were trying to avoid Russian frigate squadron blocking the coastal sea route. Aftermath the Swedish warships that survived the breakout headed into open seas, assembled at Vidska Skerry just south of Pitkapasi, and then sailed to Svibog Fortress near Helsinki, Finland for repairs. Chichagov was late in pursuing the Swedish navy, but pursued them to Svibog. The next day, Captain Crown captured the 62-gun Rietvisen with the help of the 66-gun Isiaslav. The Swedish battle fleet retired to Svibog for repairs while the Swedish archipelago fleet made for a strong defensive position at Svensk Sund, near Kotkar. An impetuous Russian attack on the Swedish archipelago fleet on July 9 at the Second Battle of Svensk Sund resulted in a disaster for the Russians and both parties would sue for peace.